Welcome everybody to my garage today. This morning I've got Double D with me earworming. I'll go ahead and put him in the background and show you guys what I'll be turning. I've got a piece of ash. It's a little dirty, but uh, it's an eight inches wide square and then just under just over two inches in height. And I'll be turning a square platter and be adding a bit of texture and milk paint to the bottom of it. So I'll go ahead and get started. Daniel, if you want to read through who's all here. Absolutely, absolutely. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, so far in the group, we have Bonnie Adams. Brent Beecroft, Seth from Brickhouse Craftwork, Chris Dodds, Chris Spinningwood Dodger, DIY Dark Matter, Doug Miller at Woodspun Round, Douglas Munga, Martin with Four King Owls, Gerard the French Turner, Blair with Good Turn Daily, Lawrence Bugasia, Rob CP, Nick the Flaming Turner, Tommy's Workshop, William Ellis, and William Rose Creates. So welcome, hey, everybody. Welcome everybody. Gonna put up the tailstock for some added support. I got it mounted on a worm screw right now. And Adam with I Love Wood Turning has joined. Welcome, Adam. Welcome, Adam. I'm gonna adjust this camera a little bit so you can see more of the tool rest. And I guess more of Harry. I know that's what y'all are all here for. Looks like it's pretty flat, so I'll true up the face just a little bit. Or the bottom, I guess. And we'll get started. It's got the speed up to around a thousand just because of the open spaces at the corners. I want it to be faster so it's less time I'm not cutting wood. Shaping a tenon. Then I'll go ahead and start shaping the wings. The Klondike Craftsman has joined. He says, hello, hello. Welcome, Nick the Flaming Turner says, cheers, Hodge. I was just going to ask if you could move the cam a little as my cam OCD was kicking in a bit. So it's going to be a fairly shallow dish. I'll bring the uh, corners up to, I don't know, maybe three-eighths of an inch from the edge here. Get a pencil and just kind of mark it on that bit of sharp. I don't know where one of those are. Okay. So I'm going to turn the corners to roughly somewhere about there. Can't really see it. And then I'm going to, I took a class by Al Sturt years ago, maybe five years ago, and we did this kind of textured dish, just trying out different textures you can all make with a Dremel. And then the bottom has this circular sort of design, which is all done with a bowl gouge. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do if I can remember how we did it. So it doesn't really matter if it's smooth or if you get a smooth cut or not because we're looking for this waviness.
guys are all doing well and staying safe. Yep, there's a little bit of chatter about uh, laser engravers. Um, Rob is Rob is laughing because he snapped his finial on his live he just did. So fun stuff. Bonnie asked uh, Harry. Noticed that Harry was looking a little flat this morning. Is he is he doing okay? Yeah. yeah. There's some news that will break in tomorrow's uh, premiere, but uh, you guys will just have to tune in to see what happens there. But I think he's in a decent enough mood. Good deal. Corners, otherwise there's a tendency for chips or corners to break off. There's a little bit here, but still got a ways to go. Gerard is asking, what is the best place cheap enough to have an iron engraver with one's own logo? Um, Gerard, I have a branding iron I got off of Etsy, so that's a place I would look if uh, if you're wanting like a branding iron, something like that. But uh, that's definitely a place to start for that kind of thing. Nick says, DODD sounds... Sounds like he should be on the radio. I'm going to tell you, I look like I should be on the radio, too. Um, don't have a face for TV. basically to that pencil line here so and the corners all seem fairly equal length so I guess I got a cut square on my cable saw earlier which is a good thing so I'm gonna smooth out this corner here there's a bit of a hump and then after that I'll start trying to make these little uh, what do you call it? modulation oscillations yeah move the tool rest. And for those of you who don't know or don't follow Lewis the Klondike Craftsman, I believe he hit around 3,400 subscribers the other day. So congrats to Lewis. Amy DeAngelis has joined, says it's 1 a.m. here, but still wide awake, so I thought she'd come join the fun. Welcome, Amy. Welcome, Amy. So at this point, the base is fairly smooth. So now, if I remember right, what we did in that class is we just kind of went in and went out kind of like this motion to create those uh, little ridges. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to throw a link to Lewis's channel out in the chat in case anybody doesn't follow him. With 3,400, there probably most of you do, but he does amazing stuff, especially with hybrids and things. So, seems to be cutting too well. It's kind of like you want to try to get a crappy cut on this. So. Yak Branson has joined. Welcome, Yak. Glad you could come along on the Hodge and Harry journey. Well, it's going to look a little bit different, but... Oh, well. 
Clive Rogerson has also joined. Welcome. Said he's a bit late, but he was having so much fun being sprayed with fresh cherry juice. Uh, that sounds interesting. That leaves a lot of questions, but I'm not going to ask him. Vicky Jenkinson has joined. Welcome, Vicky. So I'll give you guys the view from the tail stock. If, uh, let's see if I can turn the light off and shows more shadow. Or maybe if I turn the light on. You guys, I guess you might have to trust me. There, you can kind of see the texture. Once you get the milk paint on, hopefully it'll show up a little better on the camera. I'm going to do a little bit more near the. Actually, no, I'll leave that as the foot. So I'll just make it concave a little bit so it'll fit on the rim. Adam Adam says he's uh, considering a budget CNC. Adam, you might chat with Brad over at Brad's workbench. Um, he has a CNC, but he, he has some pretty good ideas on stuff too, so that might give you a good place to at least talk to and see what you can find. I'm just trying to get... A little more uniformity in these little ridges. There was one spot that didn't have very many. Maybe I'll fix it. Robert Dolman has joined. Welcome, Robert. All right. Well, that's good enough, I think. So at this point, I'll make sure to get the tin in the right size. And then I'll move the tailstock. Then we can move on to coloring. To rest a bit. Should be the right Steve, sign. Steve P with Fenrika Woodstuff is joined. Hi, Steve. Welcome, Steve. Nick, the Flaming Turner, has to head to the store. Have a good one, Nick. Thanks for coming by. I'll use my point tool just to refine the dovetail. Now, I'll go ahead and take away the tail stock. So the colors of milk paint that I have are black and a barn red color, which will go on first. And I've used milk paint one other time in one video, but I use blue. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some water. It's supposed to be equal parts water to milk paint. And then you just mix it. It says for two minutes, but I've found that it's not too critical. It's not like resin or anything. And I guess I should have gotten something to stir with. Go find a small piece of wood. The chat conversation is now turned to lathes because evidently dark matter suggested to Lewis that he buy a Harbor Freight lathe on the last on his last premiere. Yeah, I think his uh, general lathe works out well compared to the Harbor Freight one. <laughs> and James with Design and Make has joined. Hi, James. Welcome. Welcome, James. I started art. I started started art. Nice. I started out with a Harbor Freight benchtop lathe, and it worked really, really well. Uh, but needed to upgrade, so I got my Jet 1642, and I've been super happy with it so far. So, as you can see, I just mixed it to 
they say like a you know basically like a milk consistency I'm gonna get a board and put underneath my piece so I don't drip anything on the lathe bed long but I will camera now I'm just kind of paint it on I think it's a little runnier than it should be but it should be fine I think the edges here and right now they have some burn marks so I'll probably eventually just take it to my little oscillating sander and I'll sand it flat and that'll remove any paint that gets on them unless I decide to paint the edges I don't know this color kind of reminds me of brick houses logo yeah I was just gonna say the same thing so Hodge I think you you have that uh, virtual makers fair coming up uh, the 27th right yeah uh, JP at, you know JP woodworks was kind enough to offer me or ask if I wanted to participate in the virtual crafty event coming on the 27th of March and I accepted of course so I think I'll be turning a maple burl platter that I got from worldwide burls off Instagram So one thing I'm going to do, I painted the foot, but I think I want to leave the foot natural. So I'm going to turn that off once I get done with all this. So I'll get my heat gun. Seth is now really, really excited because you're making a bowl just for him. Yeah. Turn the heat gun off, pointing away from the piece, and then I'll start drying it off. found a piece that had some that wasn't fully mixed a little bump but shouldn't make too big of a difference so you dry each layer as you go through it rather than letting them wet and mix a little bit or you find that to work better or just trying different things uh i've never tried doing two colors while they're wet uh this way i know you can kind of get that sand through worn look like farmhouse furniture have has sometimes with the milk paint gotcha and you can see when it dries it dries kind of a different color but it basically looks the same color as it did in the powder form. Scott Tig has joined. Hi, Scott. And you're able to mix the powders to form your own color. And the cool thing about that is it'll look the same color as what it mixed to. Well, that's cool. Vicky just said, uh, I walked to the kitchen to get coffee, come back, and it's red. Why are you painting? I don't know. I mean, it's just something that I see a lot of people do. I figured I'll give it a try. I mean, I could turn you guys another bowl, but we all have seen that before. So you're going to do the red, and then you're going to do the other color over it, and then you're going to yeah. sand it a little bit so that both colors kind of show through, correct? That is the plan. Okay. to see the texturing a little better now so it's almost dry looks quite rustic yep and brad's wood turning is joined welcome brad we were just talking about you welcome brad all bad by the way all bad just kidding um brad there's a couple of people that were talking about cncs uh, so I told him you would be a good resource at least to talk through stuff. So they might be reaching out to you. See you later, Seth. I was just going to say Seth has to head out. So Vicky's asking if the new name of the channel is called Watching Paint Dry. No, not quite. That's 
Malcolm Douglas has joined. Hi, Malcolm. Put this red paint to the side and move on to the red or black one. And Brad, just a heads up, I'm sure this is going to be a shock to you, but I do mention you once or twice in my video tomorrow, FYI. Does your uh, new shop decor make an appearance? It does, as does some uh, hashtag tongue wax. All right. And don't forget, people, mash that thumb if you're happy with what Hodge is working on. You enjoy watching him support it. Get the channel spread. And this stuff cleans up pretty easily with water. So if you want, you can save your brushes. But I will probably just forget about them and then throw them away. The cool thing with this technique is you don't really have to sand anything. And you don't have to worry about getting a smooth cut. Until you do the inside, I guess. Right. It is nice looking, though. I don't think I plan to do too much painting on my lives, but I figured, what the heck because it's kind of running out of ideas. I've got a whole oh. bunch of wet wood with me in my shop at the moment. So if you guys really wanted to see a bunch of rough turning, then that could be something I'd do in a future event. Blair asked me to put a link to Brad's page in there. So I put the link to his wood turning page. Um, he has another channel as well, uh, Brad's Workbench. Uh, but he does a lot of more tool reviews and things like that on there, whereas the wood turning is more wood turning, of course, and stuff. He passed the thousand sub mark not too long ago, so congrats to Brad on that. So now let's give this a bit of a dry. I don't, know, I don't know, Dark, once I made that black cloth, I've uh, kind of went away from it for a while. Harry was really happy with that big black clock. Yep. Hodge is pushing the 830 subscriber mark, so... Make sure that you get out there and share his videos and channels. Let's help him hit that thousand mark sometime soon in the next month or two if we can. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm not sure what I'll be giving away for a thousand subscribers, but tomorrow will be my the video that you can enter in to win the 500 subscriber bowl. And then the drawing will be in two weeks from then. All right, Clive, I'll definitely do that. I mean, I've got, I'll just show you guys. I went and got some sweet gum the other day. So I've got like eight bowl blanks that are 20 inches in diameter, quite a few that are like six inches deep that I could make a 12-inch bowl from. So I've got quite a few bowl blanks hanging around right now.
Blair is closing in on the 200 subscriber mark. So it's getting there nearly dry by now. Could be done in a minute or two more. I just little bits and pieces that are still showing up kind of wet. And Chris Spinningwood Dodger has to leave. Says, uh, sorry he's got to go. Have a good one, Chris. See you later, Chris. Now with the milk paint finish, you can leave them natural. And then they little might just wear over time like you kind of want them to. Or you can also apply an oil finish or wax finish or anything like that. And Neil Gould has joined. Hi, Neil. Welcome. You're welcome, Neil. Brad says uh, he'll make his way around. He's pretty swamped. Then he says, you don't want to know the reason I had a minute to pop in right now. Yeah, you're probably right. So I will go ahead and get... Uh, I'll go with 320. That's really just a guess. I don't really know how it will... Uh, and you can kind of see some red showing through there now. So I'll just continue doing that. You don't really have to do much. And you can sand as much as you'd like. It's just depending on how much of that under color you want to show through. And I... Just repeating it, I'm, I just chose 320 because I wanted one that would, wouldn't would change the shape of the wood, really. Just remove some of that black paint. <laughs> Dark says, uh, you think after 12 years in, I'd have more than 70 subs, and now he's trying to work up to seven. I'm going to say that number's a little higher than that, Dark. <laughs> And Shanod has joined. Hi, Hodge and friends. Hi, Shanod, Tuka. Hello, Shannon and Todd, whichever one it is. All right. Thanks. And Aurora. Is Aurora watching? Happy enough with this. I don't want too much of it showing through. And then, like I said, I will go ahead and turn away the foot set paint painted area. Should be fine just the tail without the tail stop. Bacon. Right. Hooray for bacon. We'll finish the bottom once I turn the tin off later. I'll go ahead and reverse it now. Dark, that uh, that hand card rose you did for February is pretty stinking cool. That's all I'm going to say about that. Rural Life with the Rossus has joined. Says, good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Now I will mount this in my Nova Chuck. Well aligned. Go ahead and move the tailstock back out of the way so I don't poke myself in the elbow. And get the turning center out. Lower the tool rest a little. Kind of see where the corner is so I know where to begin. I need to take away, well, kind of depends on how thick I want the rim to be. 
I think I'm going to shoot for somewhere a little under a quarter of an inch. So go to the overhead camera. Right now I have uh, three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to turn down some of the edge here. Chris Dodds asked, is the weather getting warmer? I see thongs on the floor behind you. Yeah, it's uh, supposed to go up to 80 degrees today. Hodge, uh, Brad is asking, now that Texas is fully open, can I come turn on your lathe? No, my wife doesn't agree. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd with Duke of Heritage has joined. Hey, Todd, welcome. Hope you enjoy that bacon. Eat a piece for me, please. I'm just trying to get the corners defined to the thickness I want. I'll go one more pass and try and take it a little easier. Right now, I don't have any tear out, so that's good. Just thinking about all the participants in the YouTube cross channel challenge and things. And there's just been such amazing creativity from everybody in this. It's been, a, it's been awesome to see across the board. the edge goes so i'm pretty happy with the very corner i think i'm roughly a quarter of an inch but it gets a little thicker right afterwards so i'll go deeper in at the corner pieces is that you have this flat edge and that allows people to see the thickness of the piece the entire way so it's I'd say really important to get a uniform wall thickness throughout and you're turning a lot of air which makes it fun too Yeah, I just put a link out to William Rose Creates. Uh, he's sitting at just over 60 subscribers, but he's been wood turning for a long time. So give him a check and subscribe. I'm going to find a pencil real quick so that I can kind of highlight where I've got ridges that I need to remove. I don't know about you guys, but I tend to lose pencils and tape measures. Radar the wood turner has just joined. Welcome, Radar. Welcome, Radar. So I have one little ridge to get out of there. And hopefully with the pencil, a little more visible, you can kind of see it. Uh, down here-ish. There. 
so I'm happy with this. Well, I can remove a lot of the waste wood now in the middle. I'm going to switch to a different gouge so I can keep that edge somewhat sharp. Yeah, definitely mash those thumbs, people. That tells that tells the YouTube to share Hodge's videos and will help push him up over that thousand subscriber mark too. And you guys in the chat, you know, feel free to make some asterisks. Todd says, I mashed my thumb a little while back. Took months to heal. Let's take a look and see where we're at now. Still got a ways to go. Maybe this extra wood to remove. Dark, I will never reveal the secret that you gave the thumb up for Harry and not for Hodge. I won't tell anybody. So, Daniel, what's your wife up to today? Is she out in the backyard? She is not. She is uh, still in bed, actually. It's 8.30 in the morning here. So, yeah, I don't have to holler at her because our neighbor isn't having an emergency while I'm earworming for my buddy, so. All right. So now, at this point, I'm going to start moving in about, at this point, and getting it smoother. Lewis says that Harry watches wood turning the way my dogs watches him eat. Rob CP says, I don't I didn't have a thumbs down yet on today's live, strangely. Well, you might not have used enough French in your in your live today, Rob. So I want to try to get it as smooth as I can because when you have the corners, you can't really sand by hand with the lathe spinning. So I want to reduce the amount of hand sanding I have to do. Too thick. But I know a lot of people like thick acid.
at this point I'm solid wood, which is a good thing. I think this cut is a lot more smooth, but the wall thickness right in the middle is a little thicker, so it takes away just a little bit more. And Vicky says, I don't know how anybody deals with something they can't see. You have any tips on that, Hodge? Uh, I mean, you can, it's kind of like what they say when you're turning us regularly. Let me try to get a better angle. When you're, you can kind of see a ghost shadow when it's spinning fast enough. And it's also easier to see back in this edge when you're cutting. So I tend to look back here often what I'm trying to make the cut. Uh, and once you, if you spin it fast enough, if you're comfortable with it, then it's not as difficult as if it were going slower. Because the problem when it's going slow is your tool will be in there, and then you're just kind of pushing. It's kind of hard to stop it. So when there's air, your tool goes in, and then it'll hit the wood and make it bounce, and then there's just a lot of vibration there. So I'm pretty happy with the wall thickness the entire way. So now I'll just be removing a lot of this wood. I can't go too much deeper because then I'll make a funnel. So Yeah, and Todd says that bright light helps but washes out the video, and it does. But that's a key thing I've learned in turning is when you're cutting, it helps to watch the horizon of the piece because you get to see a little bit better angle on it. Of course, you don't want your hand to get hit by one of these sharp corners. So I, if you've noticed, I don't put my hand past the tool rest. It's always behind it. That's just a way to avoid any sort of incidents, really. So Amy just asked me what projects I had on the cards. Um, tomorrow's video that will premiere is uh, my second ever attempt at eccentric turning. So I turned an eccentric goblet. Um, Next week, I have a special project lined up that I'll put a little, there's a little teaser about in tomorrow's video. Um, other than that, it's going to be working towards the YouTube cross-channel challenge project. Uh, I have a pretty intricate idea in mind that's really going to push my comfort zone for sure. And I will tell you that um, Todd and DIY Dark Matter both really gave me a lot of the ideas for this so thank you both in advance even if it fails miserably you're really pushing me to try something new so we'll see William asked, aren't you a little eccentric anyway? Yeah, I will tell you the video's name is The Eccentric Turn, open parentheses, ER, close parentheses. So, yeah, it sure, I sure am. All right, so now I'll start. Got away, got rid of most of the waste wood, so I'll make uh, more uh, finishing cuts of it. This is where I really need to make one of those more like the 60 degree type grinds on one of my bowl gouges so I can get these transitions better. I don't know why I haven't done it yet. Check and make sure. 
sure I'm not getting too thin, which I'm not. Can you angle that tool rest just to get a little closer, or are you not needing yeah. to? I mean, I don't think I'm not getting really any vibration now that I'm in solid wood where the wings aren't. Cool. I'm using a 5 8 bow gouge, so that's got a pretty thick uh, shaft. <laughs> It is cutting pretty nicely at Todd's head. I'm going to move a bit more of the waist load in the middle and put some of cut. Douglas Mungham said that he turned an 11 inch by two and a half inch shallow bowl with a deep undercut lip to watch the other side to see the cut. Now though, he's having trouble sanding the bottom of the lip. Yeah, that sounds unpleasant. Todd said he just picked up a two inch sanding mandrel for sanding can't believe he's waited long. It's like magic. Yes, absolutely. It, it helps out immensely. Terry from TJ like, Turning has joined. Like a two-inch sanding mandrel for like power sanding? What's he been using in the meantime before he picked it up? Shannon suggests starting a side gig making Walmart quality furniture out of the wood chips. Yeah, wood chips and a little bit of glue and you're set. Maybe some color. Richard Phelan has joined. Welcome. Welcome, Richard. Taking a little, little nub in the middle. You're going to catch it? Do no, I don't care about that. <laughs> point. I mean, it was fun for a little while, but yeah, I lost interest. Yeah, do it once, so like, eh, whatever. Pretty happy with the thickness. There's a bit of a ridge here that I'll just mark again with a pencil just for fun. And then there's obviously the stuff in the middle that I need to get smooth, so I'll start taking final passes. Matter has to run. He's taking his grandson out to spoil him. Have a good time, Dark, and definitely have fun with the kid. So now that I'm using a smaller half-inch gouge, I'm going to angle the tool rest in and get a little better support. Radar has a quick question. Uh, do you sell your bowls? If so, how do you price them? 
I've sold. Well, let me finish this real quick, and I can discuss that while I sand. Yeah, I mean, I can talk about how I price how I price bulls when I do them. So I yeah, I mean, I, I, I basically got my idea from you. So oh. that's what I do. Kind of. Yeah, so when I when I make a bowl, I take the diameter times the height times two point five. So if it's five inches across with two inches, and five times two is ten, and then I take that times two point five. So that would be twenty five dollars is what I would sell that bowl for. Now, if I have to pay for the blank, then I have to factor in that price as well. But if it's free wood, which we get a plethora of here in the States, then that's the basic formula I use, at least to start. If it goes to live edge or inclusions, then I then you, of course, want to add value for that because it's harder to work with and finish appropriately. And it adds that aesthetic value to it. And then if you add... Um, resin or you do any resin casting you have to factor in that as cost as well so that's what i personally do so there's a little bit more that i feel like i'm going to get a better cut with here scott you were asking if we have to have a video to be part of the youtube cross channel challenge you do not um we have several people who post on instagram only uh, just use the hashtag YTCCC2021 uh, for your project, just to so people can follow that hashtag and see what you do. Jennifer's with Jennifer's Craft and Creations has joined. Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome, Jennifer. All right, I think that might be good for a demo piece. So I'll just do a little bit of sanding, and then minutes for an hour. Might run a little longer. I'm put my dust mask on real quick. Anne has joined. Anne Ackley, welcome Anne. We are doing great. I'm going to post a quick link out to Radar the Woodturner's channel. He just passed 100 subs and is uh, growing. So support him if you would like. Does some fun stuff. All right. Well, I'm going to turn the lathe on to sand where there's full wood, not where there's the air, open air. Turn the lathe speed down a little bit. And I'm going to throw out a link to Jennifer's Crafts and Creation. She also just passed 100 subs the other day, so congrats to her. But she does some fun stuff as well. Now let's try to sand each of these corners kind of individually for a little bit. Hundred and twenty grit. I'll go to two forty.
want to throw out a link to TJ Turney Terry's. I uh, did this awesome U bowl. Check that video out. It was really cool. The graining in the U is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'd, I'd spend more time sanding this, but just because it's alive, I'm not going to waste y'all's time. I'll probably revisit it and finish it off by hand. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to mainly do is just sand the full section while it's on the lathe, and then I can come back and sand the corners off camera. So what kind of wood was it, Hodge? It's ash. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's ash. J Vicky wanted to know what she needed to smell. And Brent D. Craft has to run, so have a good one, Brent. in the middle and then go from there and then I'll turn off the foot if I can find 400 grit I thought I took one out earlier there we go I don't know if you can hear an answer. That looks uh, awesome. So Amy I'll has to run. Go ahead and take this off. I'll Thanks probably for just finish, finish it with uh, walnut oil or something. But I'll turn the foot off now. I have my trusty... This is another piece of ash that I was turning into a bowl and saw some cracks years ago. So it's became my go-to jam chuck. And just a reminder again, Hodge is participating in a virtual craft fair on the 27th. So more info to that about that to come out. But definitely check him out with the cool stuff he's going to be working on for that. So I just took a piece of this cabinet foam or router matting, whatever you want to call it, and put it between the wood. Remount it with the original point. Cutting pretty true. Now I'll just try to take off as much of the tin as I can. Rural Life with the Rosses has to go. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, so definitely enjoy. See you later. DJ Brinkley has joined. Welcome, DJ. Make sure nothing's going to hit. Turn the speed up right around 700 and just start taking off the tin while pressing towards the headstock is what I typically do to avoid any unnecessary forces in the wrong direction. William asks, are you doing a Phil Anderson tenon removal? Uh, maybe, we'll see. I myself have not done a lot with tenon removal. I'm still getting the hang of that with uh, jam chucks. So so what I think I kind of want to do off camera probably is I'll leave a little foot that's natural, but then I'm going to color the inside area black. And then maybe I'll like carve out my name or something to where that looks natural. So we'll see. Florida Bearded Woodworker has joined. Welcome, Florida. Welcome, Florida. Maybe kind of looks cool with the black edge there too. So 
Yeah, that line looks kind of cool. It's a little interesting feature. I'm going to use my point tool and try to clean up the edges of this black circle. And if it looks good, I'll leave it. If not, I can get rid of it. I think I'll go ahead and leave it. I just have to take off a little bit of paint that's on the inside area of it. All right, let me clean that off. switch to my uh, I think this is half inch detail gouge or spindle gouge it's got a narrower point just remove it smaller and maybe do the Phil Anderson style removal thing Can you switch to the overhead as the main camera, Hodge? Yeah. Thanks. I think that'll give a little better view of the process you do. So I'll go ahead and lower the camera and try to get a better view if possible. Nice. Oops. Fairly in focus. In focus. So yeah, I just want to try to make this little nub as skinny as possible right now until I get to the point of trying to cut through it. Right now I'm at 800 RPMs just for your information. And at this point I feel like this tool is getting too fat. At some point, I was planning to reduce the heel of this tool, kind of like Cindy Dresda sharpens her detail gouge. just haven't gotten around to it. Your mic, has, has your mic moved at all? Because you sound a little bit quieter than you were. Uh, is that better? A little bit, I think. It might be because I'm kind of put my head down near the lathe, so maybe the sound cancellation. Gotcha. And, uh, no idea. All right, I have to I'm going to switch to let's try my point tool and see if that's narrower, which not really. Uh, all right, so I will go. Ski, I suppose. Cutting off little layers. It's not really working very well. So at this point, you can see that the little nub has stopped spinning and I'm pressing against the bowl. That's awesome. So should come off right back up. Yeah, so there you go, the little nub things there. And I'm left with, you know, basically nothing, a little sanding up near the edge. But other than that, well done. That is it? Let me move this camera back up so I can see more. But that's basically the little decorative bottom square dish thing. It's got some 
pretty cool grain, I suppose. A little yeah. bit of coloration, uh, mineral streaks or something over here on this edge. I'll probably sand these edges to get rid of the burn marks. I know my table saw needs a new saw blade, but it's not really a tool I like buying. I'd rather really buy a turning tool. Right. But that's basically it. I'll put some photos on. I'll put some photos on Instagram when I uh, put on a finish. Are you guys having trouble hearing still? Steve Combs is joined. Hi, Steve. Yeah, I mean, you got a little bit quieter. I think it's a little bit better now that you're back further away from the lathe. But I think my I think my mic is going to a webcam instead of my headset for some reason. I mean, I can hear you, but uh, right. Vicky and Bonnie said that they were having a hard time. I you were a little fainter, but. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. It looks like on OBS something is going on with my audio setting for some reason. Hey, that's like what happened to me. It wasn't going through my headset. It was going through the other one. So the mute on my headset wasn't working when I was trying to get Sarah's attention. Yeah. I'll go ahead and end the live now since there's some audio issues, but I'll put pictures on my Instagram once I'm complete and on my Facebook. So I will thank you all you guys for joining me. And don't forget Hodges premiere tomorrow at 12 p.m. Central Time. Yeah. All right. And thanks, we'll guys. See everybody there. Bye.